Section 32 of the Aesop for Children. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Aesop for Children by Aesop. The Hare and the Tortoise. A hare was making fun of the tortoise one day for being so slow. Do you ever get anywhere? he asked with a mocking laugh. Yes, replied the tortoise, and I get there sooner than you think. I'll run you a race and prove it. The hare was much amused at the idea of running a race with the tortoise, but for the fun of the thing he agreed. So the fox, who had consented to act as judge, marched the distance and started the runners off. The hare was soon far out of sight, and to make the tortoise feel very deeply how ridiculous it was for him to try to race with a hare, he lay down beside the course to take a nap until the tortoise should catch up. The tortoise, meanwhile, kept going slowly but steadily, and after a time passed the place where the hare was sleeping. But the hare slept on very peacefully, and when at last he did wake up, the tortoise was near the goal. The hare now ran his swiftest, but he could not overtake the tortoise in time. The race is not always to the swift. THE BEES AND WASPS AND THE HORNET A store of honey had been found in a hollow tree, and the wasps declared positively that it belonged to them. The bees were just as sure that the treasure was theirs. The argument grew very pointed, and it looked as if the affair could not be settled without a battle, when at last, with much good sense, they agreed to let a judge decide the matter. So they brought the case before the hornet, justice of the peace in that part of the woods. When the judge called the case, witnesses declared that they had seen certain winged creatures in the neighborhood of the hollow tree, who hummed loudly, and whose bodies were striped, yellow and black, like bees. Counsel for the wasps immediately insisted that this description fitted his clients exactly. Such evidence did not help Judge Hornet to any decision, so he adjourned court for six weeks to give him time to think it over. When the case came up again, both sides had a large number of witnesses. An aunt was first to take the stand, and was about to be cross-examined when a wise old bee addressed the court. "'Your Honor,' he said, "'the case has now been pending for six weeks. If it is not decided soon, the honey will not be fit for anything.' I move that the bees and the wasps be both instructed to build a honeycomb. Then we shall soon see to whom the honey really belongs. The wasps protested loudly. Wise Judge Hornet quickly understood why they did so. They knew they could not build a honeycomb and fill it with honey. It is clear, said the judge, who made the comb and who could not have made it. The honey belongs to the bees. Ability proves itself by deeds. THE LARK AND HER YOUNG ONES A lark made her nest in a field of young wheat. As the days passed, the wheat stalks grew tall, and the young birds too grew in strength. Then one day, when the ripe golden grain waved in the breeze, the farmer and his son came into the field. "'This wheat is now ready for reaping,' said the farmer. "'We must call in our neighbors and friends to help us harvest it.' The young larks in their nest close by were much frightened, for they knew they would be in great danger if they did not leave the nest before the reapers came. When the mother lark returned with food for them, they told her what they had heard. "'Do not be frightened, children,' said the mother lark. "'If the farmer said he would call in his neighbors and friends to help him do his work, this wheat will not be reaped for a while yet.' A few days later, the wheat was so ripe that when the wind shook the stalks, a hail of wheat grains came rustling down on the young lark's heads. "'If this wheat is not harvested at once,' said the farmer, "'we shall lose half the crop. We cannot wait any longer for help from our friends. Tomorrow we must set to work ourselves.' When the young larks told their mother what they had heard that day, she said, "'Then we must be off at once.' When a man decides to do his own work and not depend on anyone else, then you may be sure there will be no more delay. There was much fluttering and trying out of wings that afternoon, 
and at sunrise next day, when the farmer and his son cut down the grain, they found an empty nest. Self-help is the best help. THE CAT AND THE OLD RAT There was once a cat who was so watchful that a mouse hardly dared show the tip of his whiskers for fear of being eaten alive. That cat seemed to be everywhere at once, with his claws all ready for a pounce. At last the mice kept so closely to their dens that the cat saw he would have to use his wits well to catch one. So one day he climbed up on a shelf and hung from it, head downward, as if he were dead, holding himself up by clinging to some ropes with one paw. When the mice peeped out and saw him in that position, they thought he had been hung up there in punishment for some misdeed. Very timidly at first they stuck out their heads and sniffed about carefully, but as nothing stirred, all trooped joyfully out to celebrate the death of the cat. Just then the cat let go his hold, and before the mice recovered from their surprise, he had made an end of three or four. Now the mice kept more strictly at home than ever, but the cat, who was still hungry for mice, knew more tricks than one. Rolling himself in flour until he was covered completely, he lay down in the flour bin with one eye open for the mice. Sure enough, the mice soon began to come out. To the cat it was almost as if he had already had a plump young mouse under his claws, when an old rat, who had had much experience with cats and traps, and had even lost a part of his tail to pay for it, sat up at a safe distance from a hole in the wall where he lived. "'Take care,' he cried. "'That may be a heap of meal, but it looks to me very much like the cat. Whatever it is, it is wisest to keep at a safe distance.' The wise do not let themselves be tricked a second time. End of section 32